If I want to do something, I put my mind to it and I'll do it. And just keep striving for just the most. And I think every chapter in your life comes like a new purpose as well. I'm looking forward to kind of like where this journey is taking me. It only takes one connection to transform it to something even bigger. Not everything is going to work out and it's okay. Absolutely. If you keep trying things and it's not there, I think it's best if you try it and you say, this is not for me. Mm -hmm. And then you go on to the next one. It's all about finding what works for you. Success for me is being time free and financially free. And my goal is to be able to just do what I want to do when I want to do it as I please. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Need to Succeed podcast, where we have incredible conversations with phenomenal entrepreneurs just to understand what is their need to succeed. Because here's the thing, two people can go through the exact same situation. One person decides because of that situation, they can no longer achieve the things that they've always wanted to achieve. And the other person decides because of the exact same situation that they absolutely have to achieve all of their dreams. Same situation, different outcomes. What is the mindset of the successful entrepreneur? That is exactly what we look to uncover on this podcast. And today, we have an absolutely incredible guest. She is the CEO and founder of Let's Talk Property. We have got Hayley from Let's Talk Property. What's thank going on? Thank you for on? having me on. I really, really appreciate you. So thank you. I'm, I'm buzzing. I'm <laughs> glad I'm excited. I'm glad to have this. Um, the, the timing has been a little bit mad okay. from our side, yeah, it's okay. but you've been very gracious, very patient, <laughs> and I appreciate that. Thank you very no much. No problem at all. <laughs> it's all okay. <laughs> okay, good. So let's get into this. I'm buzzing for this round. Um, I keep keeping this a secret from you. I don't know why. When I first started, I had to tell everyone, Hey, listen, then we've got this, but for the last like few months, I just haven't. And then I have to explain it on the pod, but I will explain. Okay. Everything is just free flow. Yeah. I'm just a little secret. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I'm joking. It's not. I'm trying, I'm trying to give it some dramatic pause. Here, no. but it's, not, it's nothing serious. So we've got two set questions. That's it. Okay. Everything else is free flow. So it's the first one and the last one. Okay. That's it. Are you ready? Hit me. Let's get into this. Okay. Here comes the first question. What does success actually mean to you? Um, I would definitely say success for me is being time free and financially free. So my biggest thing right now is I'm very time poor. And my goal is to be able to just do what I want to do when I want to do it as I please and to not have any financial limitations to do what I want to do when I want to do it. Mm. So that's when I feel like I'll have real success. Amazing. I love yeah. that. It's, it's crazy because those two things are inextricably linked. Yeah. Make more money. And then, listen, some people decide to just keep making more, just keep making more, mm -hmm. just keep making more. And I get that as well because I'm, I'm super driven yeah. like that. I'm not going to lie. But at the same time, you know, the ability, you know, the reason why I got into entrepreneurship in the first place is I want to spend time with family. I want to have the freedom. I want to have autonomy mm -hmm. to be able to make decisions. So, okay, you know what? Yes, I love working. Yes, I want to give everything to my business. But you know what? I want to go see my daughter play football. Yeah. I want to go see my daughter do a play at school. Well, yeah, I've got that choice. Do you know yeah. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And that to me is that freedom. But I think that's kind of what you're talking about there, right? It was on the topic of that and you saying you want time freedom with family and things like that. That's probably something that has come from me as well this year. So my nan's been very unwell this, this year. And I found like when there was times when we got phone calls, if I'm at work, it's really hard for me just to dip away from work and go to the hospital or maybe I need to spend a bit more time with the care with my nan and things like that. So if I had that time freedom, that financial freedom, I wouldn't have to worry about telling my manager, oh, okay, like I, I need to go and take some time off and there wouldn't be any like financial implications for me going and caring for my nan. Just little things like that, that you know what I mean? Like it just makes a big difference. So spending time with family. I don't have any children. I don't aspire to have children just yet. Um, I don't have like a partner, so I don't like have to worry about anything like that. For me, it's just about doing the things that I want to do. Like I love traveling. So if I want to hop on a plane to Japan tomorrow, I can hop on a plane because there's no financial limitation and there's no time limitation. So that's for me is what I strive towards. Do, do you know how mad that is? Like just, it's crazy. Uh, and, and I keep, I've been, I've been toying with this recently mm. like the way people view risk 
you know, people keep saying that like, entrepreneurship is really risky. Mm -hmm. You know, you can end up doing it and making no money and then you lose everything. And I think like, if you just think like the way that we're living right now is risky, just think about that. And I resonate with that because the reason why I finally made the jump mm. is because my mom was in a coma during mm. COVID. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to explain to my wife, like, I need to take time away. Yeah. And they were telling me that my clients need me. Yeah. I'm like, did you hear what I just said? This is the thing. They don't hear what you say. Like, you're, not, you're not hearing they me. Don't. You know I'm saying like, you're there like your nan. It's like, and, and, and the thing is, we know when not to even ask. Even though it's deep and you want to do it, you're like, I can't even ask for it because I already know. We shouldn't even have to ask for time off. I should be able to say, look, this is happening. I'm not going to be here for a minute. Simple. Simple as that. Simple as that. And there should be an understanding. And But at the same, in the same breath, I feel like when you're an entrepreneur, when people work for you, I understand how difficult it can be from their perspective when you've got a business running and you have a set amount of staff doing a set amount of things and that staff member goes away and someone else needs to pick it up and sometimes it can just cause chaos. So recently I have been seeing it from both angles as well. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Listen, that that's one of the, the, the toughest things to face as an yeah. entrepreneur, in all honesty. But, but it goes back to the same thing, which is you don't have to work for someone else, mm -hmm. right? Like, and people talk about, oh, the system is broken. And, and that's what I, I actually flip it. And I say, no, the system is not broken. The system is designed to serve the system. Mm -hmm. And it's working exactly the way that the system wants. Just because mm -hmm. it ain't working for you, it went not built for you. Yeah. It was built for you to work in the system, but it wasn't <laughs> built for you. So yeah. the system's doing good. It's, the system's doing what it's doing. You see what I'm saying? So for you to break away from that, mm -hmm. you are the one who needs to make that decision. Like, you know what? I'm done. This doesn't serve me anymore. I need to now go somewhere. I need to be an entrepreneur and yeah. create my own system. Mm -hmm. So when you look at it in that way, you're like, well, which one is more risky? Because you could end up doing this 40, 50, 60 years, you end up with 200 pounds a week pension. And then at the end of it, when you're in the most vulnerable period in your life, when you're 60, 70, yeah. you earn the least amount of money you've ever learned with lesser chances of mm -hmm. actually creating something really big not to say for any of the older generation that you still can't create something big mm -hmm. you still can but the chances and the opportunity and the same energy that you've yeah. got so you have to go out there and just do whatever mm -hmm. is now more limiting that's, that's the, the bigger thing, yeah. risk because at that time it might be too late and the thing is like touching on your point there about like being a bit older like say for example at my nan everyone knows her for her cakes her rum cakes and her sorrel which is a, a jamaican drink and everyone loves that like that's what my nan's known for her baking and everything that she makes even though maybe she may not want to do the whole entrepreneurial side there's a side that maybe like we can do like as her grandchildren and maybe her children that can maybe like we can start a business there where we we sell her cakes for her and then you can have entrepreneurship in the whole family I love so that. obviously she's doing what she wants to do which is baking she loves that but then we have the mindset of the entrepreneurial side and we we kind of monetize off what my nan likes to do and what my nan's known for I love because you know we've like within her own community like we've in church and things like that everyone knows mrs lee has the best rum cake ever <laughs> and the best rum cake what rum cake you yeah know yeah you know where to go i hear that i hear that <laughs> but, that, but that's beautiful i love that i love that um but what's really interesting i think this is you you're you're almost like the perfect guest mm. but i told you why because you know this show we talk about entrepreneurship a lot and we talk about you know entrepreneurs who are like fully fledged in this but i feel like the reason why i say you're the perfect is because we, we always talk about, I always talk about touch on this transition. Mm -hmm. Some people struggle with the transition. Some people don't end up doing the transition because they're panicking. They don't know what to do. It's like, when do you actually make that transition? How do you do it? Do you do it at all? And you're literally one leg in both camps at the moment, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So I think it's going to be really, really great to touch on that. Mm -hmm. But before that, let's get to understand you a little bit more, like your journey, mm -hmm. right? To get, because, you know, we were talking about the event you had last night. You took like... Barclays. I'm like, yo, like, this is big names. I know. <laughs> big names, yeah. So I let's know. talk about like, you know, you know, who you were growing up, you know, did you ever think you'd be working with brands like this, all of that? But you can just tell me a little bit more about, you know, who were you, what were you like at school back then? So let's say when you were like, you know, seven, eight, like who was who was Haley then? Um, I think I've always been a very much like a, a vibrant personality. Like I would say in my family, I bring the entertainment. Like <laughs> I've always been kind of like a free spirit. Um, my parents put me into private school. So I've always kind of been in that element, but it's weird because I've always felt like I'm not meant to be in that space. I don't know if it's because it's made me, I don't know if it's the space that has made me feel like I didn't belong in that space, but maybe because there's not a lot of people that looked like me in that space, it kind of made me feel like I didn't belong. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm grateful for them spaces because 
from an early age, I've saw, I, I saw, sorry, my English is terrible sometimes. I saw a lot of wealth. Um, so some of like my classmates, like their parents would be picking them up in Bentleys and things like that. Oh, and then what? obviously like the women, that? yeah, like when we're having like, you know, when you have like the children's parties and things like that, obviously it would sometimes it'd be the whole class that goes and has a children's party. But when I'm going to like my friend's houses, it would be like mansions. And I've seen well from a very early age. So that's always kind of been like my norm. And from a young age, I think I used to think that, not like everyone lived like that, but if you work hard, that's how you're gonna live. Mm. But I didn't also realize that there's the stages. I thought there's people that can work hard and just don't get the financial reward for working hard. And there's people that work smart and get the financial reward for working smart. Um, and I think it just depends because I see people that can work like three, four jobs and they still are making pennies. Mm -hmm. So I don't think that's working smart. You're just working very hard. Mm -hmm. um, so it's all about like, what kind of steps do I need to make in my life to get to see myself in the position where I can pick up my child in a Bentley one day from school. Do you know what I mean? 100%. Because that, that has just always been my norm. 100%. Um, and at the same, in the same breath, because um, my nan and granddad pretty much raised me. When I'm going back to my nan and grand's house, granddad's house, they always lived in probably, probably like middle class, middle cl working to middle class areas. So it wasn't upper class. It wasn't the mansions and things like that. But at the same time, right. I've kind of seen the best of both worlds. Mm -hmm. So I've seen what it can look like. Not that same people don't work hard, but I'm, I've seen what it looks like when maybe money isn't working for you. And I've seen what it looks like when money is working for you as well. Mm. So I've always had the mindset of, I'm gonna go the way that when money can work for me. Mm. Um, I'd probably say my adult life that has got, it's proven to be harder than it seems. Mm -hmm. So even though it may look like, okay, if I need to, I do, I'm just gonna do X, Y, and Z and I'm gonna get there. There's a lot of steps that come. Interesting, interesting. I'm not, there's, listen, there's going to be, there's so much to unpack. I right know there I'm is. Excited. No, I'm excited. I'm excited, <laughs> right? Because once, so, so on the way down here, mm -hmm. I was, I don't know how many times now, this is probably seven, eighth, you know, I've read the hardback probably about four or five times. And I've now listened to this audio book about maybe five, six, seven at a time, which yeah. is Think and Grow Rich, mm -hmm. right? That book transformed, you know, the way that I think in general about wealth, about what's actually possible. And, and it's pretty much kind of what you've said there, which is what you're surrounded by. Yeah. You become, Tony Robbins says, you become what you think about. Yeah. Right. And if you're surrounded by all of this wealth, you're going to your friend's house, they've got all of these mansions, the conversations you hear and their parents talk about, mm. and this becomes the norm to you. It's almost an inevitability because you know that it's possible. Yeah. You I, I, know I can, I it's can achievable. see it. Yeah. You can see it. Right. Mm. So once you know something is possible, it's like, okay, cool. Well, what do I need to do to get there? Yeah. That's a, that's a much easier question than yeah. not even being able to see in the first place. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that's, you know, that's a really, really powerful upbringing. And this is something that I think about, about because there's pros and cons to private schools. Mm. But I'm sure you can probably, you know, speak, speak more on that. When I'm thinking about my daughter, there's, you know, a strong part of me that wants to ensure she goes to private school just yeah. for the network and just kind of seeing, yeah. you know, the people around her. It's powerful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can, I can definitely yeah. see that. There's another part when I'm like, uh, do, like, do I want her to be in that environment? Because like you said, there's, there's this element of, you know, are you actually from here? Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? And then, you know, there's, there's almost like this, this, you know, two, step system in terms of the way you're being treated like do you need to go it's a really really difficult thing that i'm processing is, in my mind is. but there is that element of you can see it you can believe it the mm -hmm. quality of the conversations you're having the people who are around you can just take you to a whole yeah, 100%. whole different level yeah but how do you feel that those experiences you know as a young girl has actually shaped your mindset. Is there, is there a time you can go back to and say you had a profound experience, you know, that changed the way you view the world or the way or where you saw what was possible for you? Um, I'd probably say my parents said when they had me that every single year they're going to make sure that I go on holiday. So I've traveled to a lot of countries through my parents. And one thing that my parents do when we get to those countries, they will show me different ways of living as well whilst we're there. And I remember one particular time we went to Cuba and we went to the capital Havana and my mom took me, my parents took me to a particular area where there was a lot of poverty. And I remember like, I was like, I literally burst into tears. I didn't understand how people lived like that. Like for me, that was just like, how on earth are people living like this? And my mom was always, my mom literally said to me that it was like, you need to work hard to make sure that you do not end up in this kind of situation. I need to make sure that you stay focused stay in the right path. So this is not your situation as well. And um, 
I just feel like my parents, my family, like all of my family, we're all very like driven people. Uh, we've all got we've goal setters and we work towards our goals as well. So I think the family that I've got around me is very powerful. Um, and that shaped me to who I am today. Again, like you said, the schools, I've gone to good schools and that has helped me as well. So the people that I'm interacting with, maybe like growing up, maybe I'm not getting myself into the wrong crowds because of the type of schools that I've gone to as well. So even though there was one point when I was younger, I was like, oh, I want to be out doing this, doing that, doing this. But then sometimes I look back now and I'm kind of glad that I didn't, I wasn't out there doing all this type of stuff because maybe I wouldn't be where I am now mm -hmm. and doing the things that I am now. But I've always just kind of been put in positions where it's shown me that do X, Y, and Z and you'll get to be able to do this when you're older. You'll, be get, you'll get to experience this for yourself when you're older. Or you may be able to give this opportunity to somebody else when you're older as well. I love that. It, it yeah. sounds to me like your parents have worked very, very hard. They really have. Yeah, to, you know, to give you the right ethics, you know, to, and yeah. to really educate your mind and shape yeah. your mind into yeah. you know, what they believed is the right way. And obviously now it's turned out to, to be the right yeah, way. Yeah, it's come from my grandparents, 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. They're passing a lot of really good messages, a lot of good morals, a lot of good ethics as well. Um, and that's translated to all of us, like all of us grandchildren. What's the biggest lesson us. you learned from them? Um, well, my nan is adamant <laughs> that I do everything that I can do for myself, that be an independent person, don't rely on anyone, um, and make sure you go and achieve everything that you want to achieve, but for yourself. And yeah, that stuck with me a lot. So, but at the same time, in the same breath, I do think that I probably need to challenge that a little bit because I do now in 2023, I've realized there's a lot of power in unity and joining ventures with people. So I think before I used to probably work hard in the sense of trying to do everything for myself and not trying to utilize help from other sources. Mm -hmm. But now I'm understanding that collaborating and people working hard together can cause something even greater than what I possibly have, could have done by myself. Oh. Doesn't make me feel any less independent, but it's it can get me somewhere else. So like, even for example, with my, my event yesterday in Barclays, I'm putting out my work with Let's Talk Property and someone from Barclays has approached me and said, we wanna give you this opportunity. That's two people now and he works in that division and putting on events. So he's gaining from it because obviously that's his field. I'm gaining from it because it's what I do. Two people coming together. And now there was, I think between 80 to 90 people at that event yesterday that have just gained information about how to become a first time buyer. Mm. So there's two forces that have come together, both independent, but we've both put on something amazing. Amazing. Yeah, Amazing. yeah. I love that. I love that. Yeah, I mean, listen, in, in this day, in this day and age, it's all about collaboration. Yeah, you definitely. We, we live in an island, literally in the UK, but, you know, but the world is not island. Yeah. <laughs> you go share ideas, you know, and you're going to benefit from sharing those as much as the person, people you're sharing yeah. with are also going to benefit as well. Okay, cool. So you've gone to schools, you know, incredible networks. Um, you know, what, what was the next steps? Uh, college, university. So I went to Coventry University, did psychology. And I'll probably say when I was in college, for me, it was all about, I had a passion for psychology. I love understanding people, love learning different ways of people. And I think that's again, stemmed from like my upbringing. I've always been around different kinds of people. So I think that's kind of translated into why I chose psychology. I did want to go into like counseling at first and then it changed into educational psychology because I do have a passion for like teaching people and educating people. And I think that still stuck with me today, obviously. Where did that come from? Um, I don't know. I have no idea where that's come from, but I've always, I've just always just liked helping people. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I, I actually couldn't pinpoint where that's specifically come from. Yeah. Um, but maybe like within my family as well, everyone's just very generous people. So maybe it's come from that. I don't know. But yeah, so educational psychology, um, to get into that, you need to do a PhD before you get onto the PhD, you need to do teaching. So that's why I was a teacher for, uh, four years. Um, and then within that time, I think I've had little light bulb moments where I'm like, this is fine, but it's not going to get me to the goal of what I was talking about before, like the, 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 the multiple holidays every single year, mm -hmm. driving the nice cars and things like that. So then I'll probably say that that's when I start having light bulbs thinking, well, what can I do to better my money, to make my money work for me mm -hmm. and to give me a lifestyle that I want to live? Because right now, as you can, as you probably are aware, like, Teaching is an underpaid profession, mm -hmm. very demanding, very time consuming. And I just feel like what, what I was doing, I wasn't getting the rewards back that I wanted. Mm -hmm. So that's why I was going back to saying like before, 
that people can work hard, but sometimes the money doesn't work for them. And I wanted to make my money work for me. So that's when I started looking into property investment. And that's how I've gone from there to into property investment myself now. Um, and because I enjoy property, I like how many avenues there are in property. Like you can have a thousand people and all thousand people are in different avenues of property and we can mm -hmm. all be excelling in different parts of property and we can all learn from each other as well. Mm -hmm. Cause no one knows everything about property in its entirety. No. And that's what I do like as well. You can meet different people in different fields. Like I'm aware that we're in similar fields cause mm -hmm. you run surface accommodations. I run surface accommodations as well. Again, joint ventures is even p potential for us to learn from each other and better our own service apartments as well. So yeah, absolutely. But why, why, why did you, you know? So you're you're sitting there thinking, you know what? This teaching thing is not really. Okay. It's not. Mm -hmm. It's not gonna. It's not gonna give me the dream that I'm looking for, right? Mm -hmm. Why? Why property? Oh, you've explained why property, but how did you come about thinking? Okay, property is gonna be the one. Did you go through a few different options? Were you thinking about different things, or did mm -hmm. you just have you know property investors within family? Like, how did that come about? Um, combination of both. Um, I've always said I want to work for myself. That's something I said from a very, very young age. That I want to work for myself. I don't want to work for anyone. Probably because I'm very stubborn as well. <laughs> but um, I would probably say that working for myself meant doing something that I enjoy. And younger me, that wasn't property. That property for me was me being dragged in the car when I was younger to go and visit my mom and dad's buy to let. And I was like, oh, this is boring. <laughs> so that was never really like for me. Mm -hmm. So my idea of working for myself was doing something like beauty related um, or dancing related. Cause those are two avenues that I love. Mm -hmm. So I used, to be, I used to be a dancer and as a young age, I've always loved like hair, makeup, all of that. So I actually set up a company like doing like um, eyelashes and eyebrows and things like that. And I wanted to do makeup as well. But when I was actually in it, believe it or not, I didn't really enjoy it. So I said, okay, that's fine. I've tried it. On to the next thing. Mm -hmm. um, dancing was a bit hard to incorporate into my current lifestyle. Um, and I found that like the financial reward wasn't really there um, in the way that I would have liked it to be. So again, Onto the next one. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's okay as well when you're starting off to be an entrepreneur. Like, it's not everything is going to work out and it's okay Absolutely. if you keep trying things and it's not there. I think it's best if you try it and you say, this is not for me. Mm -hmm. And then you go on to the next one. It's all about finding what works for you. 100%. Um, so then that's when I've come across property. And that was because my um, uncle, he invests in property and he does it phenomenally. Um, he'll do it in this country and he'll do it in Jamaica as well. And I've seen the lifestyle that it has been able to give him. <laughs> And that's definitely like, what has made me. That's what I want. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, want yeah, yeah. He's got the cars. Yeah, the, days. Well, yeah, the is... lifestyle that my my auntie and my uncle live is definitely the lifestyle that I want to live. All right, cool. So, but the thing is, you you thought about property, mm -hmm. yeah, but now you're you're actually working for a company while you're trying to build a business at the same time. We're not trying to while you're building the business at the same time, but like when you initially, you know, say, okay, you know what, this this teacher thing is not for me. Mm -hmm. I want to get into property. Like what? How how were you processing that information? Were you processing, well, I can't get into property, but I've still got to survive. Or you know what, um, I, I'm just going to jump into it and see what happens. Like, how are you processing that? Um, so it was literally like, I want to get into property, but I still need to survive. <laughs> <laughs> As you still need to survive. So when I was teaching, um, I saved up my deposit for my first house. Um, and I bought my first house um, when I was 24. Wow. Um, and then down the line, then I turned that into a service accommodation. I did it to our family portfolio as well of service accommodations. We've got four across the West Midlands. And then I could, because that went so well, I could now see how having multiple of what I've already built is going to get me the freedom that I want and mm -hmm. the time that I want. However, property is a long game, not a short game. Mm -hmm. And I feel like Money is needed to excel. You can utilize other people's money and that's absolutely great. And there's certain things that I envision for myself where I feel like I want to learn certain things and I want to utilize certain tools around me to be able to say, this is my, now my goal and for me to be full-time in property. And that's kind of like where I'm at right now. So I'm utilizing the, the workspace that I'm in right now to mm. learn digest everything and then put it into all of our family businesses that we've got right now and just expand them to a different level. 
So was um, that like a was that like a conscious decision? Because yeah. because like it, it, again, it's it's the Napoleon Hill thing. You know, you know when you you set an intention, you set a goal. Mm-hmm. That's what that's what I've, I for me yeah. personally, that's what the law of attraction is. Law yeah. of attraction is you set a goal. And then you do everything towards the attainment and the achievement yeah. of that goal. Mm-hmm. And because the goal is so vivid in your mind and you're working towards it every single day, mm-hmm. all the things that you need to actually accomplish that goal, to achieve that goal, starts to come to you. Yeah. Starts to become attracted to you. Mm-hmm. Right? And that's to me is what law of attraction actually works. So because the reason I say that is because you said, okay, I, w- I want to get into property, but I've got to eat. I've got yeah. to survive. Right. Mm-hmm. So you didn't, you didn't go and get a job in New Look. No, right. I intentionally got a job within property management so that I can learn the ins and outs of property, of a property sector. Let me not say property in general because it's not everything. Um, because we've got a property management company anyway that we're looking to expand, um, going into property management made sense for me. Um, I I feel like I understand service accommodation. We do that well. Um, and that's not a problem for us. So I didn't really feel like I needed any more. It, we, no, okay, let, let me not say that because we can always learn. There's always room for learning. But in terms of like how we run our service accommodations, they were fine in terms of me needing to gain immediate extra knowledge. My knowledge needed to come from managing people's properties because there's another avenue of income that could be made through that. And I know that we had this conversation after the podcast, but um, in the family portfolio right now, we manage two blocks. So one is 75 units and one's 10 units. So we're looking to expand that even further. But for us to expand, everyone needs to have their hands in. But from from my point of view, and tell me if you disagree with this as well, but from my point of view, I want to learn from people that are managing thousands, like multiple thousands mm-hmm. and see what they're doing. Because if we're, we're, if we're doing under 100 and the things that we could be learning on top of that, why would I not learn? 100%. Yeah. 100%. I, I... While stacking money on the side to put forward to more things that we can do as well. I think there's this culture and I, I, I'm always very, very careful to not kind of fall into that culture because it's easy for me to fall into that because I'm a massive, massive advocate for entrepreneurship. Mm. But I try to make a conscious effort not to fall into that because, you know, people always just look at entrepreneurship as well and say, yeah, like, it's cool, it's easy, just quit your job and, and jump in and go and make it happen. Like, it doesn't make sense. I always say, like, who's going to pay the bills? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, this is something that you've got to do consciously. You've got to plan it, mm-hmm. right, and have certain benchmarks in place and Mm -hmm. as long as you hit those benchmarks then okay cool at this point i'm gonna jump on i'm actually gonna do it but bro just relax Mm. like you like you said they've got a thousand properties i'm trying to build something (laughs) more than that they've got about five thousand about five (laughs) thousand yeah like do you know the the level of systems that they're gonna have this is the thing and i've got like a hundred two hundred oh yeah this is this is what we do of course, yeah, 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 but you, you do that. And then when you get to a thousand, where normally now you're like, crap, what do I do? Exactly. You already got those systems. You yeah. already know exactly how it works. So yeah. because, and you're learning that not for free. Mm. You're getting paid. I'm, I'm seeing what that. I'm doing right now as like an apprenticeship. That's the mindset that I've got right now. It's not an apprenticeship, no. but it's a, it's a job. You're but I'm money. seeing it you're getting as a full time money yeah, for it. But I'm seeing it as an apprenticeship because I'm learning and I'm getting paid yeah. while still building. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Very, very powerful. What what would you say to those people then who, you know, they, um, maybe they're just like, you know, I, I just want to quit. I just want to do something. I just want to go. Like, it's time for me to bounce. Because mm-hmm. you've, like you said, you've got a portfolio of, you know, 85 plus units, management. You've got, you know, service accommodation portfolio as well. Mm-hmm. And if you actually said, okay, you know what, let me just go and jump in that full time and focus on building that. You could do that, mm-hmm. right? Um, first of all, why are you not making that? I know you've kind of touched on it, but why are you not making that decision now? And also, what would you say to people who are like hastily wanting to just jump in? Mm-hmm. So one of the main reasons why I'm not full-time in it just yet is because, like I said, it is a family business and when profits need to be shared. So I think people just hear numbers and just assume that they've just made their own profit up in their head. But everyone has <laughs> everyone has a figure that they that they feel like is comfortable for them to live off. And if that is not a reality for us right now, then it's not a reality for us right now as well. And also the service accommodations bring in a very good profit. However, that profit we want to utilize for massive renovations mm. and commercial properties and commercial to resi- um renovations and things like that. So it's also about just utilizing your money and how it can work for you. So a lot of people have said to me, why don't you just do service accommodation full time? I definitely can do service accommodation full time. However, I know where I want that profit to take me further. Mm. So if I just need to stack that a little bit more, 
and then build the empire that we need to build. I'll do that. Mm. It's not, not going to be forever. Mm. You know what I mean? Every entrepreneur's got their own journey. Mm-hmm. Every entrepreneur's got their own time scale. This is my time scale. So that's why I would say like, focus on yourself and live within your means and go on the journey that makes sense to you as well. But mm. also get educated along your journey as well. Cause maybe there could be something that you could do to speed up your journey a little bit as well. Yeah. Like, like I said, with joint ventures that could speed up your journey too. 100%. And I think where you've smashed it and where a lot of people go wrong is you have intentionally gone into the industry that you, so it's not like you've got this sitting from afar, like just envious, like oh, I want to go into property, but I'm doing bloody IT and yeah. this is so boring. that like, I just want to guess it's like, I'm doing property every single day anyway. And every single day you feel like you're learning. You're mm. like, oh wow, okay, this is gonna be great. When I can I can tell my mom this so we can put it into our business. I can say this, so we can put it into our business. And Literally you know, that. when we get to this level, oh right, so we can use this. So it's like this is not actually mm-hmm. boring for you. Mm-hmm. You're not seeing yourself just like, oh, I'm I'm enslaved to this. You're saying, okay, <laughs> yeah. like you said, this is an apprenticeship. Yeah. I'm learning a law. And naturally, next week, next month, next year, two years' time we're going to absolutely crush our business yeah. by the time we get there because mm-hmm. we've already got we've the got foundation that knowledge. the skill. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. And um, we've got the the means to take it further. And I feel like you've got to have that own determination and it comes down to like your own personal why as well. I feel like entrepreneurship is very much on like, I think a lot of people get into it because they have like a specific why. And I feel like that's something that I've been lacking recently. Like a, a why, like why do I want to do this? Um, because you know some people like for example you mentioned that you've got a daughter naturally that potentially will be your why yeah. you know what i mean you said that you want to spend more time with your family that's your why yeah again if you reverse that back to myself i don't have children i don't have a partner and it's not saying that it's not going to come right now but it's not something that i would like at this present moment in my in my life so again that's not a why for myself yeah some people their why is maybe taking um, their family out of a certain environment that they're in and put them in the better environment. Maybe it can be like buying their mom or dad a house. Yeah. My parents are mortgage free. They're fine. Yeah. Like my grandparents are fine. My family are feel, fine. Do you feel like though that you're suffering from these traditional template, um, social media definition of what's your why or not so much definition or, or of what the why should be? Because to me, mm-hmm. From speaking to you, it seems pretty clear to me what your why is. Freedom, time freedom. I love traveling. My parents mm-hmm. have always shown me, you know, the beauty in traveling. I've done a lot of traveling. I want to do that. I want to have autonomy. I want to have freedom. I don't want to, you know, want to go somewhere. And then someone's telling me that I can't do that. Yeah. That's a massive why. It is a why. Yeah. But I feel like some whys give you a bit more of a kick. Do you know what I mean? Some, uh, yeah, I like, the, 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 you got some whys that are like, I don't, I, I want to achieve that, like the time freedom. I want to achieve that, <laughs> but sometimes it doesn't give me that kick up the bomb that I need. Yeah, do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, 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 Whereas yeah, yeah, like, yeah. for example, like with your daughter, you see your daughter every single day. Mm-hmm. You see that why. I hear that. Do you know what I mean? I hear that. But when I'm like, I'm still able to go on holiday. It's I just like, that. maybe I'm not able to go as often as I would like, or maybe for as long as I'd like for, but I'm still going on the holidays. So sometimes it's not the biggest kick up the bomb. So sometimes I feel like I need maybe a bit more of a driving factor to get me there. So that's why at the, the moment I'm trying to get that driving factor back. You're not, you're not having big boy holidays. Mm. You're having little mini holidays. I'm actually not. That's the worst thing. <laughs> what, what are your holidays? Lit, lit, lit. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's tough then. So you need yeah. to find someone else. Cause I'm saying like, it depends like, because obviously you can go on holiday, mm-hmm. but it's like the way to go on holiday. Do you see know what I'm saying? Like this is the thing. Yeah. Another level. You step it up the type of restaurants you're going to, you know, yeah. you're getting picked up from your house. You're getting driven. You know, you're going through the, you're not, you're not queuing at the airport. Do you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like you're getting taken. So like, all, so you can level it up and then you start looking at, yo, that's going to cause, but like, but I want to experience that. But that's, I think that's come from, like I said, my parents taking me on holiday a lot. Yeah. So because I've gone on holiday at least twice a year, every single year of my life. Yeah. I've been on a lot of really nice holidays. Okay. So I think my expectation is already here. Yeah. So when I'm looking to go on holiday myself, I'm always... You're playing at that level anyway. Yeah, like I'm, yeah. Already, I'm, I'm already at that level. Yeah, so for yeah, me, yeah, it's yeah, all yeah. like, okay, what? There are certain things that I know that maybe I need more financial stability to be able to achieve the bigger, bigger, bigger holidays and for longer periods of time. Yeah. But like, for example, like I'm obsessed with cruises. I love cruises. Like cruises for me are like the top 10 ways to travel. Serious. Because it's I like it's three, four I've holidays. I've one, but I'm like, I don't, maybe it's just... Experience it? Yeah, exactly. Maybe Experience it's just it the idea that I've, because I'm like... 
I'm gonna sit on a boat that's going about two miles per hour for flipping seven days. Like that just sounds long <laughs> in my head. I, I don't. Yeah. Just, I haven't done it, so I can't really. But say you know yet. what it is? You've got the idea that it's a boat. Yeah. For one, <laughs> it's not a boat. <laughs> for one, I remember the first time I stepped on a cruise ship. I didn't realize we were on the ship. That is wow. how insanely big it is. Okay. Um. So I've I've only ever done the Royal Caribbean ships. Okay. Um. And it's been in the Caribbean because I know Royal Caribbean they do the Mediterranean as well. But I've only ever done the Caribbean ones. Um. There's a park on the ship. <laughs> there's birds on the ship. There's oh, like there's that. ships with roller coasters. There's ships with um. Do you know like them like three sixty pods where it takes you up and then it takes you like around the ship. Like there is there's no way on how people can tell me that they've been on a cruise ship and been bored. Serious. And when you've got kids, the crip, the, the crip, the ship is very accommodating to kids. So if you don't want to see your child for the week, <laughs> you haven't got to see your child for the week. Because <laughs> the Royal Caribbean, the way they do it is they have a very good service where they'll pick up your child from your room in the morning, take them to the play center, whatever, have all these activities lined out, um, feed them at the buffet, um, evening activities. And then at the end of the day, return your kid to your room. Oh, no, that's, so if you don't want to see your child, you don't have to see your child. <laughs> Cruises. We're going to go cruise next year. <laughs> well, this is the thing. Like, I remember I was talking to um, someone that I know in the property industry and he'd never been on a cruise before and I was telling him all the things and when I saw him on it, he said he had the best time of his life. <laughs> and I think it's something that everyone needs to experience because you get to travel to so many different countries all at once. Mm. If you don't want to go off the ship, you don't need to. Um, there's activities for every... I, I know, obviously, it's hard to say everyone, but I do feel like there's activities for every single person. Mm. Um, I like the Royal Caribbean ones because of the fact that there's lots of Americans on there. And I feel like Americans bring a different kind of vibe. They bring a different energy. <laughs> um, so they have the sail away party. And as soon as, you, as soon as that ship leaves the deck, the music's blasting, everyone's Serious. dancing. <laughs> like, it's just such a good time. It's a good energy. It's a good environment. Okay. Um, the staff are very accommodating. Um, a very kind of like luxury kind of like environment as well. So I just love a ship. So when you go on one, let me know. Okay, I would. I would let me see if you can take back I what would, you said. I would, I'm like, yo, Haley. <laughs> <laughs> let me know if you take okay, back what you said. Okay, cool. So I saw you're coming from this. So yeah, maybe you need to restrict it and figure out, you know, a, a strong, deep enough <laughs> yeah. why because um, you seem to, to be enjoying all of that. Okay, cool. So let's talk about this then. Because at the moment you have got plans to transition. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and there's going to be a lot of people who are, you know, they're working, they want to go into entrepreneurship and they're just thinking like, how do I do this, right? Um, when do I make the move? So like, what what are your plans to to finally take the plan? Have you given yourself a timeline? What are the steps to actually make that happen? Yeah, so giving myself a timeline, giving myself daily things to do to achieve that timeline because there's absolutely no point in giving yourself a timeline and you don't do things towards it. No. So you need to... I'm choosing to make certain steps, get certain education so that when I do something, I do it correctly, surround myself with the right people. Can you give us some, some, some of those steps? So if someone's just watching this and they're thinking about, okay, cool, what steps should I take? What are the steps that you kind of said, okay, well, if I hit all of these, mm -hmm. then by this timeline I'm giving myself, then I'm going to take the plunge. Okay, so one of my steps was to get get better educated. So networking with people that are doing what I want to do mm -hmm. and they're doing it successfully and I can see the success and I can see what it's called, um, not, not cause them. I can see the result of their success, mm -hmm. um, learning from them, um, speaking to people that are going to get me to my goal. So speaking to mortgage advisors, learning from them, understanding different ways of financing property. Um, and that's something that I've been actively doing at the moment. Also, you're not going to acquire the property if you don't go out there and look them or look for them. <laughs> so obviously making a goal of how many property viewings I'm going on every single week, how often I'm looking at properties as well. Because again, the more you look, the more, the better, the closer you will be to find that property that you want. Mm -hmm. um, networking. I'm an advocate for networking. And I would say that I have a very strong circle of people around me and a very lot of talented people around me. Um, and that's just coming from all different angles of property that we're in. Um, so just building up good relationships with people because you never know when someone, you're going to need someone's help and vice versa as well. Um, so I'd say actively going to networking events. I go to a lot of networking events and 
I'll probably say I'm not very good at networking on social media. That is probably my downfall. Mm -hmm. I'm better at networking in person. Yeah. Um, but everyone has their strengths and weaknesses, so yeah. it's up to yourself. It is a different skill. I don't really yeah. know. Yeah. Like, uh, it's weird because people think I'm on social media all the time because I put a lot of content. Yeah, but, same with me. Yeah, like sitting there, I'm not, yeah. I'm, not really, I'm not really on it like that. I prefer yeah. Yeah, face to face interactions. Um, it, it's much more personal, but you get to build stronger relationships a lot exactly. quicker as well. So it makes more sense. Yeah. So how did you how did you get how did you get connected? Because you know, it's a big name, mm. flagship name. How did you get into that space where you're now showing and teaching people about you know uh, first time buyers, process they got to get to all of those steps? How yeah. did all that come about? And so, what what gave you the passion to actually want to share that? A lot of people ask me that question, actually. Why do you share it the way that you share it? And what makes you want to share it? Because you could just have bought your house and then gone about your business. Mm -hmm. um, but I'd probably say that I was inspired by um, a guy called Jason um, Bentley Morrison. He, I met him at a property networking event. He was, when I went to the property event, I think I was like 22. He was like 24, I think at the time. And um, he was, yeah, 23, 24. And he had around about nine properties. And cause he was similar age to me <laughs> and he was at a level that I wanted to strive towards. I said, we need to talk. <laughs> but again, it's where networking comes in. I think some people think networking needs to be very formal, suit and tie. Just needs to be a conversation. How do you get into what you're doing? And because he's a very approachable person, very, and the information that he gave was digestible to me, we ended up being able to bounce off each other. And we felt like the information wasn't shared. So we actually decided to do our own workshops. So, and this is very much just a wing in it situation. There was mm. not much preparation, <laughs> not much planning. So I will admit there was someone that I knew, again, networking, who owned, well, who controlled like the finance department of a, of a school in Birmingham, he let me use the school um, space for free. He was like, you can host your workshop here. There's a guy that I know that does amazing Jamaican catering. I said, can you cater my, my event? That was sorted. I thought all I need to sort out now is just getting people there. Mm. Um, and I advertised it to specifically like young black people because I wanted to help my community because I was tired of seeing like the stigma around our community in terms of home ownership and just, and how we probably just don't acquire a lot of wealth within our community as well, which is definitely changing because even the studio right in right now is owned by a black person, a Jamaican, mm -hmm. so I love that. Come on, <laughs> shout out to LTV Productions, come on. Yeah, but do you know what I mean? Like, I just want to yeah. see more of that. Mm -hmm. So educating like my people um, and being in a space like that. So that our first event, that was 16 to 25 year olds and we had about 50 people turn up to that and that was amazing considering that there was very little planning into that. Um, Jason delivered- 60? No, 50. I was going to say. Yeah. Bro, so Jason delivered like big. all the elements of like property investments. He went through loads of things. So like buying your first buy to let, um, renovations, HMOs, which is house multiple occupancy and rent to rent, which is a property investment strategy as well, where you acquire properties where you don't own them, but you obviously um, utilize them for cash flow. And then because that went really well, we did another one in London, like a month or two later. And then that had around like 60 people. And again, we didn't have the network. It's just passing the information out. Like, okay, we're doing an event here. Would you like to come? Simple as that. And then unfortunately, Jason passed away, but I've always made it my mission to just make sure that I still carry on what we started. Mm. Um, that's kind of how I got into making my page. Um, essentially, we made the page together initially, but when he just before he passed, I changed it into my own page because he was focusing a lot more on like his developments and things like that. So time wise, we couldn't really run the page together. That's when I created Let's Sort Property because I wanted to learn more about property in terms of first time buyer, property investment. So I just thought, let me just make a page and just learn and share at the same time. Mm -hmm. And then with me learning and sharing, I've acquired so much knowledge. I've networked with so many people and I feel like I've got a lot of information to share with people about how to buy your first house. So when I bought my first house, I documented kind of like my journey into buying it to renovating it. Um, and then kind of transitioning into, into a service accommodation and things like that. Um, that's where the collaboration with Barclays came. Cause obviously just my, con my content has just been put out there on like um, Instagram and TikTok. Um, that's how I got approached. And yeah, so we sold out an event in Barclays, Chancery Lane branch yesterday. Wow. So that was a really big kind of like my, I don't think it's really sunk in yet. That's massive. But it's um, I'm, it's a proud moment for me right now. Yeah. I know Jason would have been proud of me as well because yeah. with all the stuff that we started out and stuff like that to see how it's gone yeah. from just doing it in like a school 
to now doing it in, in Barclays is really big. I was gonna I was gonna ask about that. Like um like how how did that make you feel when you heard that news? Which news? That that, that he, he passed. passed yeah. Uh very hard to process because in my mind he was probably one of the most influential people in my life, away from my family, that always gave me the time of day, always wanted to see me win. Um, and was had the same passion for sharing information that I did. So knowing that that person is no longer here, it's more like, what can I do to still continue that? Um, so no matter what I do, I will always talk about Jason because I feel like he has a, he's left a legacy anyway. Um, and the certain things that he did, like for example, before he passed, like he bought his mama house. Um, he had X amount of properties, ridiculous amount of properties. He was doing developments and all before the age of 25. It's just crazy to me. Wow. Yeah. That's yeah, so knowing like where he could be now, um, is just beyond. Any kids? Yeah. Did he have any kids? Yeah. No, he didn't. No, not that I knew of. <laughs> <laughs> you, never you never know, know with men. Yeah, you never know. You never know. <laughs> uh, but it's obviously great to, like you said, legacy wise, it's great that yeah. he was able to actually do that for his mom. Hopefully that kind of put her in a really good and comfortable place. Yeah. You know, before he made sure happened. that she never had to work again. Yeah. Before he passed. Like, tomorrow's promise to nobody. Yeah. Nobody. Mm -hmm. Like it's crazy, right? Yeah. You're 24, like 25, that's, that's, that's yeah. insane, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's just all about like just making sure that every day counts. Mm -hmm. And you know, the, the crime rates in Birmingham are really bad. And it's crazy because our first ever event, I had a guy come down and speak at our event for the Young Black Landlords about um, knife crime in Birmingham and how rife it is and how it's just killing loads of um, our young black people in our community. And I remember Jason was like, we don't need that at the event, man. We just leave it about property and no, don't focus on the negatives. And unfortunately, Jason died through knife crime. And it's like, for me, it's very ironic. <laughs> it's a very <laughs> ironic situation, but it's like, it can happen to anyone, wow. unfortunately. That's Sometimes crazy. it's just wrong place, wrong time. Yeah. Yeah, so it's all about just making sure that every day, every single day count, counts, working towards your goals and just not giving up at 100%. all. Yeah. 100%. Wow. That's that, that's amazing because this is this is really, you know, it's, it's like a whole new chapter. Yeah, it is. For you, right? Because you've got, you know, you've got a big brand. It's kind of backing your message now, which means you're really able to pump out this message to mm -hmm. a, a wider, bigger audience. Yeah. It's obviously going to be absolutely incredible. Like, um, this, this actually kind of, lines in nicely with like the final question of the of the podcast right which is you know with with everything that you've done so far i mean you're still young mm -hmm. right with everything that you've actually you know achieved that you've done so far you know like what remains that like, your need to succeed um knowing that like nothing is impossible in my eyes if i want to do something i put my mind to it and i'll do it and just keep striving for just the most. Um, and I think every chapter in your life comes like a new purpose as well. So I'm looking forward to kind of like where this journey is taking me because it only, that's how I said, it only takes one kind of like connection to transform it to something even bigger. So just seeing where that can take me as well. Like even like leaving here now, I'm going to go and check on a flat conversion from someone that is very close to me that is doing exactly what I want to do and I can see it working for them and they've got that time freedom ish, <laughs> but they've got that financial freedom and we're not far in, we're not far off in age. We're like three years apart. So if even in three years, I can even get to the level that what they're at right now. Great. Yeah. Hayley McIntosh. <laughs> you remember the last name? <laughs> I remember, I remember. <laughs> Thank you very much. No problem. Thank you for having me on the show as well. Pleasure. <laughs> Thank you.